Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and in this video I want to talk to you about the timing chain related issues of the S63 and the N63 BMW engines. Now the timing chain is responsible for synchronizing the top and the bottom part of the engine and uh, it's a very hot topic because just like a spun rod bearing if a timing chain fails it could cause a catastrophic engine damage. So uh, if you have a hundred thousand kilometers BMW with one of these engines, I regret to say that you could be sitting on a ticking time bomb. Now let's understand why the chain fails and what are the three main problems associated with them. You might know that the S63 and the N63 engines are pretty much the same. So they got the same block, they got the same crankshafts, oil pump, uh, water pump, timing chains, timing chain guides and, uh, and other bits and pieces. Uh, but they do have the same common enemy, which is heat. There's a massive amount of heat generated by these engines and that is the reason why they call hot Vs. Uh, and the parts of the engine just cannot cope with that much heat. So over time, combining that with poor service uh, schedule or long service interval, you're gonna have a recipe for disaster. You have the seals going bad, you have the plastics breaking off, you have the chain stretching like there's no tomorrow. And um, that's why I think we can probably summarize the timing chain issues in three main issues. Now the timing chain naturally stretches over time and the further apart were the service intervals the more wear you're gonna have on the chain. Uh, we do have the chain tensioners they are there especially for these reasons so this is a timing chain that I actually got out of my S63, S63 engine and uh, the tensioner is there to keep pulling the, the, the guide away therefore keeping tension in the chain. What happens is the tensioner can only do so much. There's going to be a point in time where the wear is just so much in the chain and this is a photo of how the chain is sitting on the sprocket. You can clearly see here how much wear there is in this chain and uh, the chain eventually goes loose. So the tensioner bottoms out, there's not much else to be done, the chain gets loose and once the chain gets loose is where the problem begins because your engine can jump, this timing chain can jump a teeth on any of the sprockets and the fool is gonna get the engine out of timing. When that happens you could have a piston hit in the valves and that's going to be game over for your engine. The engine is gonna spot, stop, All right, it's still not as bad as the other catastrophic issues that could occur because it's fixable, you're gonna be up for new valves, maybe a new pistons and there's a couple of other things. Uh, it's definitely going to be a massive bill because most likely you're going to have to remove the engine and, and put it apart. But yeah, this is the problem number one. Now, the chain doesn't stretch overnight, it's a long and slow process. And uh, the main thing that caused this chain to stretch more than it should again is oil service intervals. So, People are changing the oil in these cars every 15,000 kilometers, which is way too much. And that, just like on the N47 and the N57 engines, the chain is going to stretch and eventually is going to cause an issue. I haven't yet seen one of these chains to actually snap, like it happened on the, on the N57 engines. But um, again, just by the fact that they get loose, the problem is there and there isn't really much that you can do. There's gonna be a point in time that you just have to take this engine out and rebuild it completely. So that's for problem number one. Now problem number two and uh, the problem number two is actually a little bit worse because it happens overnight just as you click your engine to start. Uh, the chain guides and the plastics in here they become Britain over time and they break. So. As you can see in some of the photos, when I, when I put my engine apart, some parts of the tensioner are actually missing. And uh, the ones that are not missing, they are on the way out. And you can actually see the, the, the role that the temperature actually plays because this can easily be broken in pieces and it definitely shouldn't be like that. So the problem number two is actually this. Pieces of the ch tensioner are broken off, and imagine this: the chain already, the chain already got somewhere in it, so the tensioner is working hard to keep.
keep the tension in the chain and all of a sudden you have a piece of the tensioner that just broke off that's going to add more play to the chain so it's it's bad it's really bad so uh, this is uh, problem number two and it could happen overnight there is a way of checking it though it's not guarantee but there is a way of checking problem number two but without further ado let's talk about number three problem number three is the worst one now and why i say problem number three is the worst one is because uh, this is what i can call a catastrophic engine fail these bits that broke off the the chain guides they make their way down the engine and eventually they end up in the oil pump pickup tube see this photo on the screen uh, this is actually from my personal experience this is the s63 engine that i rebuilt it it didn't necessarily happen it was just about to happen because just one more bit of this would have clogged up that pipe and it means no matter how new is your pump or how uh, well working is your oil pump if the pump supply is blocked you're gonna have no oil and your engine is gonna starve, starve to death catastrophic failure so there isn't much that you can do once you get to that stage but there is a way of checking that out and this is something that I will definitely recommend if you have a car that you love and if you want to keep this engine running uh, for a while now, the first thing that you could do to actually check how bad your tensioners are, but again, this is no guarantee because you can only see so much without actually disassembling the engine, but you can remove the oil fill-up tube, which is this one. Once you remove those tube bolts, you're gonna be able to see uh, this tensioner, which is on the top of bank uh, one, that's gonna be cylinder one, two, four, and with a flashlight or with a torch, you're gonna be able to see this little corner right here what you want to look for is uh, where is the oh there you go this is the bit that usually fell off and uh, goes missing just have a look to see if this bit is still there so I can show you this is a comparison between the old one and the new one one this is how the new one should look like and uh, my old one was actually missing it was halfway through the oil fuel uh, tube and uh, it gives you an idea of how much wear you you have or at least it gives you an idea if the tensioner is still there or not again it's not a guarantee but you could do that to check uh, you could also remove the front tensioner cover which is that little cover that that that, that covers these guys but it is a little bit more intrusive because you do have to remove the intercoolers in order to access that and uh, by doing so you're gonna be able to see how much stroke you have left on your tensioner so when you put this one brand new that's gonna be pretty much 95% uh, in uh, and as the chain wears off this uh, little piston is gonna be pushing off and off and off so that is another way of you checking it out but the main thing that I would suggest you to do is regarding your oil sump uh, pickup tube now this procedure involves uh, you draining all the oil of the engine and you do have to buy a new gasket which uh, probably costs less than twenty dollars I would, I would guess I haven't seen the price but I'll, I, I'll say this gasket probably costs no more than 20 bucks so what you're gonna do is <clears throat> once you drain all the oil you are obviously gonna have to remove all the pens under the engine and you are going to remove this main engine part which is your oil sump well here the engine is obviously upside down so it's, it's very easy to access you've got about 25 bolts that you have to remove but your goal here is to remove this and have a look inside the the, the pump pickup tube if you can find piece of the chain guide inside your pickup tube remove them clean them off as much as you can because I understand it's not it's definitely not easy to get an engine like this rebuilt so it involves a lot of uh, time and money but this check is something that you can do within pff, probably half an hour not even that much and by cleaning this pickup tube you're gonna be able to save your engine because if this goes blocked 
again you're gonna have no oil flowing through the pump and your engine is gonna be dead really soon so that is definitely something that I would suggest you guys doing if you like your engine and if you keep uh, if you're planning to keep on that running for a long time so I think that's it for today's guys um, as always thank you very much for watching and I do need to ask you for a big big favor before you go that's only gonna take you about two seconds of your time there's a lot of people watching these videos but they're not subscribing so if you like the video if you think it was helpful please hit the like button and do subscribe to the channel that's gonna be a massive help for me and make sure you check on the channel because there are plenty of videos coming up in the next uh, probably month or so um, I'm going on holidays from my work and uh, I'm probably gonna be putting a lot more time into making these videos and uh, I've got a ton of videos on the N63 and S63 engine so yeah, stay tuned and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much and goodbye for now.